They say everything is bigger in Texas and it doesn't get any bigger than this for British MMA. Liverpool's own Darren Till taking on Tyron Woodley for the welterweight world title in Dallas, Texas. He's a fighter, he's a warrior, he's a scouser. This is his time. Liverpool is my city, my home, my inspiration. It's indestructible. We stand proud, proud to be different, proud to be unique. The best city in the world. Liverpool is in my blood. My blood is on these streets. In Liverpool, you never walk or fight alone. And you're never far from a storm. I dedicated my life to building my strength and honing my skills to unlock what I knew was inside me. A fire burning in my belly. A desire to be great. It is my destiny to be the best. Don't ever doubt me again. I announced myself to the world. I seen an opening when I started elbowing his face off. And my dream remained undefeated and undaunted. I am totally convinced that in these fists, in this body, in this brain, in the scout's blood running through my veins, that I am the man, the fighter, to take that belt. I am the greatest fighter on planet Earth. Tyron Woodley, you are going to understand Liverpool's thunder. I am harder. I am faster. The gorilla! I am smarter. Guarantee shocks the world! As you feel these fists, you will hear the roar of my people. And the, the world, world will hear it too. Every dog has its, its day. day. And you have had yours. All them doubters! Yes! Say it what now! Now! On September the 8th, your dream is over. I will shut your lights out. You are getting it! And to those who doubt me, you will know who is the greatest, and the world will know where he comes from. Darren Till, from Liverpool. Goosebumps after watching that, hyped after watching that, bet you are. Well, you can see all the action live on BT Sport 1, Saturday night into Sunday morning at 1am. Of course, we start with our main man, Darren Till, and we're better to bring him than a cowboy outfit, as we are in Dallas after all. Howdy. Hey, all right. hey good to see you. Good How's to it see going? You again. Good, yeah. You feeling good? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. yeah. I don't need to play a mental game with Tyron. Uh, I don't feel like, it, uh, you know, I've, I don't feel in myself I've got the right or the authority to touch that belt. Not that I'm scared to touch the belt, yeah. it's just that I want to earn that belt, and Sati will be my time to earn it and then touch it and throw it round and do whatever, but right now it's it's not my belt. When your coach Klein sent you in to Brazil and he said every day on the phone he asked you to repeat the same words yeah. to him, what were they, tell us? Every day it was either on the phone or it was either by message, he would, he would make me say in capital letters, like a big long sentence, I am the greatest fighter that has ever lived, I will be the world champion, welterweight world champion, uh, and, and he'd have me recite that many times, he, he'd uh, I'd take a lot of inspiration from it, only coming from him. If anyone else said it to me, I wouldn't put It'd much thought. Things. It'd feel funny, but he would say it. I would recite it back to him. I would uh, send him direct messages about it. And it felt good to just keep mm. that contact with one of the most closest people in your life, Colin. I always train 100. Everyone who knows me knows how hard I train. I'm, I'm a dedicated man. You know, I live for this. I don't live for anything else. I don't have any other distractions. If someone tries to distract me from my path, they they then you know they they they, they, they know they, they know mm. not to it, don't distract me from what I'm doing. It, it's a hundred percent into into this. I've gave a hundred percent since I started, and I'll give a hundred percent until I finish. If I ever feel that I'm not giving a hundred percent, I will quit fighting. I'll retire right mm. there and then because then you see these fighters going on and they're giving fifty and sixty percent, and it's not worth the time. They should. Mm. They, I'd rather they stay home and watch fights on the, on, on the television. Mm. So I give a hundred percent into everything I do. And, and it pays off, look where I am, in, in, you know, there's only ever been one world champion from England before me, Michael Bisping, and I'm going to be the second. 
What do you think the boys back in Liverpool would make of this? Uh, Sweatpants and you, cowboy boots. You know what Liverpool's <laughs> like. They, you know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get terrorised, but I feel cool. I feel like I'm in Texas. I just need some barbecue now. Don't I get a barbecue chicken? After the weigh-ins. After the weigh-ins, of yeah. course. I like to still have a laugh. I'm a happy person, and then as soon as I get in the changing rooms, it's game time. Mm. You know, I just start chilling out, I relax, and I do what I think I do best, and that's fighting. I feel like that's why I've never had a plan B, because I feel like I was put on this earth by whatever to be a fighter. When I win the belt, I definitely want to defend it. But as I say, welterweights, it's it's coming to the end for me now. It's mm. just, it's it's not it's not. I, I'm okay. I'm standing here with you, I'm full of energy, I'm okay. Mm. I just don't want to be cutting that much weight no more as I get on the bed. I don't want to sacrifice my body. You know, I don't want to be having these... You know, everyone knows last fight I had a bad cut. I don't want to be doing that. I don't want to get to a point where it's a bad cut here, a good cut here. So I want to be intelligent and I had a bad cut and, and I feel like sooner rather than later m my middleweight debut will be coming. Mm. I'm gonna just be totally honest. Well to wait, well to wait, middleweight, light heavyweight. Okay. I don't really care. I'd fight them all in them divisions. In them three divisions, I would fight them all. You know, I've travelled all over the world. I'm painting me travelling, and I'll still say there's just no place like Liverpool. Like other places, you can compare with other places. Mm. Liverpool's not really a place you can compare. People are just different. The there's something in the water there. There's <laughs> there's the mentality is ridiculous and. I'm one of them people, you know, and, and I'm fighting for, for for my country. I'm fighting for Liverpool, and I'm and most of all, I'm fighting for myself. I started out fighting for myself, and I'll I'll finish fighting for myself. Do you know or have any idea how many travelling fans there are out here to I think, to Dallas? I think there's going to be quite a lot. I don't <laughs> want to say a specific number, but I mean, people just want to support me, and and people know the type of person I am. Who Dad and Till is? They they know he's. Darren Till from Liverpool, just normal, just he's got his head on his shoulders. He's a controversial guy, but he, he's he's a good guy deep mm. down and people want to support me for that. So I, I believe that there's gonna be a lot of cheers for me. The, 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 you know, there's gonna be booze as well. But the fans are gonna be on my side as always. I think um, you know, size will play a big part in it. Confidence will play a big part in it. You know, um, as much as Woodley's the champion at the minute, I think he's the com more confident one of the two. He's a um, it's just, it's like you can't do no wrong at the moment, you know what I mean? You have these, these people in these periods where everything you're doing, everything you're touching just turns to gold and he, he, he's going through that stage at the minute. And, you know, a lot of people didn't pick him to beat Thompson his last fight, he did. You know, he, he obviously brought the UFC to Liverpool. They're talking about Anfield, that wouldn't surprise me if he goes and does that either. So, he's, uh, he's just going and going and what, what he's saying he's doing, and, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with him on this one either. Darren Till, wow, what an opportunity. I must say, I just spoke to him, and I'm really impressed with how he looks and sounds. Yeah. I actually feel like he appears to be in a better state than Tyron Woodley right now. Woodley oh, really? That's a little bit dehydrated, and he had, like, cotton mouth, so to speak. He always has a, a, a tough weight cut, but Till seemed to be in great spirits. Now, he wouldn't say how much um, he weighs currently 24 hours before the weigh-ins, but uh, I thought that that was a great sign. Now, I bring this up yeah. first because that has been the main storyline going into this fight. I mean, it's all about the weight. I actually feel like, win or lose, he's done as a welterweight after this fight. Why would he go through this? This is a nightmare for him. He's just such a big guy, he's gigantic. So it's kind of weird to be going into a title fight where you have this young challenger who's about to potentially you know, make all this noise and it could be his last fight as a welterweight. It's kind of a funny thing, it's unique. Well, I have heard him say he'd want to defend it once afterwards, know, but, but you I think that's too it, much? It just seems like a lot. Maybe if this one goes really well, remember that video that emerged before the Wonder Boy fight of him on the treadmill and, and, and like essentially being you know, on the ground, comatose mm -hmm. almost, it was, it was scary. It, yeah. it was disturbing to watch that. I don't want to see that. I don't think he wants to go through that again. So we'll see what happens in the next 24 hours. But it's a great fight. It's a, it's a phenomenal fight. It's a fascinating fight because he's so big, because he's so young, because he's aggressive. I love the way he fights. I love his style. I love his striking style. I like his demeanor when he fights. He's very calm. He reminds me, and, and I know people will roll their eyes at this, but his style actually reminds me a lot of Connors in the sense that he doesn't waste punches. He's like a sniper. You know, like he, he pinpoints where he wants to strike. A lot of people are, are volume punchers. They'll just look to throw the kitchen sink at you. He's not that kind of fighter. You look at his Cerrone fight, like he is very precise. So I'm curious to see how that plus his size yeah. counters Woodley's wrestling and his strength as well. Woodley's a strong guy, he's short, but he's a very strong man. 
you know, I'm happy. I, I'm confident. I don't want to get too many ahead, ahead, ahead of myself, but I'm full of energy still. So later on's way cut, and, and, and I just want to, you know, as I say, as we say in Liverpool, smash it. I want to <laughs> smash my weight. I want to do as little as possible. So I've got, you know, more time to rest to get on the scale. So the, the more I train harder, the more I smash it in the sauna, the better, or the better the weight cut will be. So we'll see later. Later, I'm looking forward to it. Let's just do it now. It's time to do it. How's the fight week been going so far? Good. Everything's been perfect, to be honest. I don't want to say too much too soon, but <laughs> couldn't have gone any better. And look, the big question is Darren's weight. And we, we spoke to him as well, and he's fairly confident. But from, from the coach's perspective, what's he got to do the rest of today? Let me just say this, I'm very happy with where we are right now without giving too much away. Okay. No problem. And Tim Calbon went all the way to Vegas. You set up camp over there. You've been training there the last several weeks. I mean, how has that experience helped the build-up and the camp and, and put him in a position to go win that belt? It's been perfect for everyone around him. Because what Darren was keen to do was to go to Vegas, like he said, to, to get the rehab. But what he was also keen to do was to bring his teammates to share the experience with him. And we were fortunate enough to be able to do that. So he's brought everyone that's been involved with him for the last two, three years of his life, getting smacked by him every day in the gym. Now they're going to be here to finish the journey with him, so it's really nice. And what do you feel is the key for him beating Woodley? Very different fight to Wonderboy. You know, what's going to be the key for Darren getting it done? Being Darren. Yeah. He, it's, he's kind of made for Darren in a way, the way he fights. So if he fights the way he normally does, it's, it's, it's the perfect opportunity for Darren to shine. Just got to be obviously not be over complacent, give him the respect he deserves, but I'm confident what we've done to prepare is correct. And look, you're the man that he listens to more than anybody else by the sounds of it. When he sometimes. walks <laughs> when he sometimes when he walks out to that octagon, what'll be the last last words that you'll say to him? Enjoy every minute of it. Take it all in and shine. Coach, can you enjoy it or nerves for you? Not yet. <laughs> but I will. Kamara, you are here doing a fully fledged fight week in the the situation is that you might compete if something happens to Darren Till or Tyron Woodley. What kind of mindset are you in knowing that you have to be ready but it might be for nothing? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough mindset because I'm having to train for two completely different guys and not knowing, you know, if I will even fight. Yeah. So it was tough training for, but, you know, everything in my athletic career has prepared me for moments like this. I Being a wrestler, a collegiate wrestler and, and on the international stage, you, you don't know who you're going to wrestle next. You're just in the tournament and whoever gets past their guy is who you face next. So... You know, all that has prepared me, so, you know, I'm just kind of winging it. My job is just to show up, make weight, and whoever it is is going to get beat up by me. On Saturday, September 8th, the UFC main event for UFC 2-8 is Darren Till, the gorilla, taking on Tyron Woodley for the welterweight championship. Now, if you go back into Tyron Woodley's earlier fights, you'll see more of his wrestling base. He's a very powerful individual with a really, really strong right hand. A lot of the time, you'll see him backing up to the fence because he likes to give himself that full length of the octagon to run into because he's a very explosive, powerful athlete. So as he moves back, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see him plant his back foot. So as he drops back, you're gonna see the feint, two, one is the next feint, and then bang! And that's the right hand that switches you off. Darren Till's the challenger in this fight, and his nickname is the Gorilla for a good reason. If you stand in front of Darren Till, you wouldn't think he was a welterweight. He's huge, tall, wide, he's got long arms, he's got long legs, and because he's so aggressive, He's very overbearing when he's standing in front of you. You very much feel like you're under pressure the whole time. And what he likes to do is he likes to touch with the lead hand. So what he's doing here is setting your rhythm. He's giving you a rhythm to work to. So when he knows where your lead hand's gonna be, that's when he fires the left down the center and catches you clean on the chin. And a lot of people don't see it coming because they're so focused on the lead hand. The other thing Tyron Willie's gotta watch out for is the tie boxing body kick of Darren Till. As Darren Till's moving down, Tyron Woodley's gonna be so concerned about the punches, he's gonna leave himself open for that body kick. And if Tyron Woodley starts to eat that body kick, that slows down his right hand, and that's his main weapon. So I expect Darren Till to work that back shoulder, try and wear it down, but at the same time, dictate the pace and beat Tyron Woodley up when he's trying to defend the takedowns. Darren Till's the fighter, he's the tie boxer. So he's gonna be the one that's gonna be the aggressor in this one pushing forward, but he's the one that's also gotta go and take the belt off the champion, and that's very difficult to do. Gravy, all the talk will be done. I will beat him and be one of the best. You know, this is personal. Who's better? Who's that? Who's going? Because I'm whooping his ass on Saturday. Business is business. <laughs> He's getting slapped. <laughs> 
Welcome back to Dallas. It's not just the men's welterweight title on the line Saturday night. Nico Montagna defends her flyweight championship against Valentina Shevchenko of Kyrgyzstan. Are you sick and tired of hearing questions about being <laughs> the underdog? <laughs> yes and no. Like I said, it's always been that. Um, I don't really have anything to compare it to because I've always been the underdog. So it's just part of who I am. I made history, you know. That's in itself to me rewarding, very rewarding. I'm the first ever women's UFC flyweight champ, first Native American UFC flyweight champ. You know, she's kind of a counter striker, um, counter fighter. So not necessarily playing her game, but keeping that in mind, you know, I like to kind of be stealthy myself. Um, I think my strength is my, is my um, power, is my, sh my strength. Um, so I don't know, this fight can literally go anywhere and I'd be really, really happy if it went to the ground, obviously. I've been a purple belt for three years, but I've been working on my stand-up and that's become well-rounded and a lot more fun these what days. Valentina, you fought former champions and beat them in Holly Holm. You fought the champion Amanda Nunes at Bantamweight. Where does, where does she, Nico, rank as a t in terms of toughness of an opponent? Um, uh, of course, every opponent is different. I cannot compare like uh, her to them. Even I cannot compare Holly Holm to Amanda because they are so different. They have different style, different spirit, different technique, different everything. So for me, every fight is different history, different preparation, different motivation. But uh, same, uh, the same fight is give. It's uh, put on me a lot of responsibility. Doesn't matter who will be in front of me. I will be preparing for this fight as same strong as I was preparing all the times. What a fight that's going to be. Well, we've heard from Darren Till, but what about the champion Tyron Woodley? He's made three successful defenses of his title. Can he make it four? But you've fought and beaten the best in the welterweight division and now opposite you is a young, hungry fighter, as you've described, Darren, yourself. And you said that's a position you've been in before, so you know it's a dangerous position. What does Darren bring that, not that you're concerned about, that, that you have to work, you know, work out? And you know, he definitely punch. has real punching power. He has real KO power. He has the confidence that she just spoke of a second ago. And being that I've been that young fighter, been hungry and yelling and screaming for the, the best competition and really being confident I can beat him, it really made me focus and bring the inner Tyron out, the young Tyron that, that got the title and you know they really, really wanted it. So it was a blessing in disguise. He just invigorated a different fire because I know how dangerous it is and many people didn't take it serious. Cowboy didn't take it serious. Who is this guy? I don't know who he is. He found out very quickly and not only that, he allowed everybody else to find out. What gives you the better fighter IQ? Is it just experience in your in your um, I have more tools to use. You know, it's, it's knowing when to use what tool at what time. It's also being in there with the best brawlers, the best grapplers, the best point fighters, the best well, uh, well rounded strikers, the best freestyle fighters, the best wrestlers. I've trained and prepared and been in there with the best of those guys. And also, if I need a takedown, I'm more likely to be able to get it than him. If I need to go for a submission, I'm more likely to get it than him. If I need to get in close and brawl and, and, and bang, I'm better at that. And covering distance, nobody in the sport does it better than me. What do you think you have to do to s cement your legacy? You know, that people are saying Tyron Woodley is the greatest welterweight champion that's ever lived. I think I just got to be quiet with my mouth and just go out there and let my hands do the talking. I can't force a perception on a fan, organization, a group of fans, a nation. All I can do is continue to be the most dominant most vicious welterweight champion that's ever walked the octagon, continue to win, continue to knock off the number one tenders, continue to knock off the rising stars, the perceived prospects, the people that they see next to do whatever, continue to be those guys. And at the end of the day, you can only respect what I've done in the octagon. What still motivates you? What do you fight for? This fight, this fight I didn't really have to um, look too far. You know, I got a young, hungry kid that really means it, is confident, he really believes he can beat me. That's all I really needed. So that, that lit a fire that no other fighter has been able to light. Mm -hmm. So I'm just excited about it, you know, to a certain degree. I want to thank Darren Till because he made me train in ways I've never trained. He made my mind just the thought of pain, the thought of fatigue, the thought of, you know, rounds, all those different things didn't come into play in this fight. I just envisioned him wearing my belt and how out of place it looked and how, you know, life is so different as non-champion. I'm the champion. And still people can perceive, you know, Tyron don't get the respect you deserve. Imagine life as a non-champion, you know what I mean?
And you don't like the look of that? No, I don't like the look of that. I don't like to see him walking around my belt, you know what I mean? Of all the fights you've had so far, um, which, is, which has been the highlight one for you, which has stood out the most to you, or been the one you felt the most proud of um, yourself? You know, to be honest, when I got knocked out um, against Nate Marquardt, I felt like a, you know, I felt like a bat out of hell. At the time, I was a wrestler, you know, the grinder, the prospect, you know, and nobody knew me to be a brawler. They didn't think I would stand in the paint with him and punch with him, and I did it. And um, I did it to a fault, but I was proud of the way I went out there and I just didn't hold anything back. Uh, I, I really think this fight is probably going to be my best performance. I think it's going to be my most meaning, meaningful performance, taking out the young fighter, um, going out there and just imposing my will and just being so dominant and being so vicious. Not a lot of talk before, not a lot of talk after. This is what I do. I'm a champion. I'm supposed to be the best. I am the best. I'm supposed to be guys that, that want my belt and just walk off, you know? and I think that's the, the strongest message you can send. And how do you want to walk off if you to visualize this fight going the perfect way? What's your prediction? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a quote um, that Muhammad Ali said. He said, I want to know how tall my opponent is so I can know how far to step back when I knock him down. I just imagine hitting him. His body's just, every motor skill, everything's just leaving his body, and me stepping back and letting him fall, just walking away. No celebration, no taunting. No yelling, no screaming, no roaring, no beating the chest, no jumping on the edge of the cage, just walking away. Deep breath, this is what I'm here to do. This is what I came to do. I visualized it so many times. This is, this is what the king does. This is, what, this is how I get down. This is how I fight. And that's it. And just let that speak for itself. I think, you know, now that Demetrius Johnson is no longer a champion, I think that Tyron Woodley might be the most underappreciated champion in the UFC. And I say that with all due respect to Nico Montano, who is, of course, the biggest underdog in UFC history as far as champion is concerned. But it's amazing to me that here we are two years in to Tyron Woodley's title reign, and he is an underdog once again as of right now. Three of his four title fights, he's been the underdog. And against Darren Till, who's never been in a title fight before, who's 25 years old, he's the underdog. Why do you think that is? I think it's a little bit of the hype. Yeah. I think it's the size factor. I think it's what he's done in his last two fights. And I think a lot of people still haven't bought into the fact that Woodley is as good as he is. I think he's really good. I think he should be the favorite going into this fight. Um, I think it's fair to make it a very close line, but it is surprising to me that he's the underdog. A confident Tyron Woodley there does not think the belt will be heading to England. There are in fact three Englishmen on the card Saturday night, including Craig White and Darren Stewart, who also step into the octagon in Dallas. So Darren, coming off a fantastic win, UFC Liverpool, I mean, how has that changed your mindset going into this fight? Because that was essentially the fight that you said saved your career. Yeah, it changed my mindset in a big way. You know, it's made me a lot more confident, yeah. a lot more confident to move on to the next one. I lost a lot of confidence because of the losing streak I was on. But after that win, I'm back to where I need to be. So let's talk about your opponent, Charles Bird. Um, he's looking to break into the top 10 if he gets a win over yourself. You know, how are you going to stop him? What's the game plan? I mean, he ain't going to stop me. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to beat him up round one, beat him up round two, beat him up round three. You know, at the end of the day, I'm going for the win. You know what I mean? mm. who, knows, who knows how I'll win? I don't know. That's in God's hands. But all I know is I'm going for that win. Everyone's asking me who I wanted next, who I thought I'd get next. and genuinely have no idea there was too many possibilities so yeah. when I did get off with Diego Sanchez um, it was a massive shock I called up the coach I was like this is who they've offered we got really excited straight away it's like a, yeah we're going to do that there's no hesitation same with the Magni fight yeah. um, we're fighters foremost so getting the opportunity to fight someone like mm -hmm. Diego Sanchez whether it's your second UFC fight your 12th UFC fight any UFC fight it's a great fight to have yeah. um, and it's going to be very entertaining for the fans so what a night it's going to be. We get underway on BT Sport 1 from 1am on Saturday night. You don't want to miss it.